Hello, I'm Santal Nagaraj. I'm a Partner Solutions Architect with AWS. Hi, I'm Christy Ye. I'm a Technical Sales Specialist at IBM. So, Senthal, IBM has a lot of customers that are running MQ on virtual machines um, on-prem. So, a lot of them are looking to migrate to AWS. What are their options to be able to do that? Yeah. So, first of all, before even talking about the options that customers have, I want to touch upon one important thing, which is licensing. IBM does tell us that IBM MQ licenses are transferable to AWS. But what we insist our customers to do is check with your IBM reps to make sure these licenses are portable to the cloud, right? So once you have done that, then we can jump into the options that you have available. The first option customers have here, and mind you, this is not production grade. This is for developers who have their own virtual machines and they want to test their environment on AWS. You can deploy IBM MQ on EC2 instances. And you put that EC2 instance in an auto scaling group. And as you can see here, your auto scaling group spans two availability zones. You have an IBM MQ running on EC2 instance in one availability zone. And for storage, you use EBS storage, which is Elastic Block Store. MQ, as I mentioned, runs on EC2 instances. And what that auto scaling does for you is let's say you lose an availability zone. Let's say availability zone one where IBM MQ is running has an issue or the IBM MQ itself had a problem and it went down. The auto scaling group can detect that and spin up another IBM MQ instance in another availability zone. Mind you, EBS volumes are availability zone specific. There is no data being replicated. Like I mentioned, this is for developers. This is for testing only. So you have MQ running on one AZ with your data residing in that same AZ. If you lose the MQ instance, then your Q data is gone. Fits development and testing purposes locally. Yeah, so just talking about EBS volumes, if you want your data to be replicated and available in another availability zone, when an issue happens, you always have an option to replicate the data. AWS provides you with the tools in order to do that. All right, so you talked about development and testing environments. So what yeah. options do we have for environments that are running in production? Sure, this is one pattern that's available for customers to use. Most customers use this today on premises as well. This is what IBM calls as a multi-instance IBM MQ deployment. You would see a primary instance of IBM MQ running in availability zone one mm -hmm. with a standby instance running in availability zone two. Mm -hmm. The way this works is you set up your IBM MQ primary on one EC2 instance mm -hmm. in one availability zone, and then you extract the command that you need to run in order to set up a standby in the other availability zone, and you do that. Now notice, we are not using EBS block store here. The reason is, if you want a failover to happen from one availability zone to the other, and if you want your data to persist, you don't want to lose Q data, right? That's the reason we use either Amazon FSx for NetApp ONTAP, or we can use Amazon Elastic File System. The difference between the two is performance. If you want a high performance file system, if you have an MQ workload that requires a lot of throughput, and it has to perform very efficiently, then you can choose FSx or NetApp ONTAP. Other instances, EFS works just fine. Now we use an Elastic Network Interface, which is an AWS construct that lets you access your FSx or EFS file system outside of your subnet where your IBM MQ is running. So how this works is the primary is always taking MQ traffic. Something happens, the standby knows it, the standby becomes the primary, connects to the file system, reads all the queue messages, and you have all your queue messages there. You don't lose anything. So, Santo, now that the standby MQ is the primary MQ, can you explain how the remaining applications are able to communicate with the new primary MQ? Yeah, sure. So now, notice we are using either Elastic IP addresses mm -hmm. or the Elastic Load Balancer mm -hmm. in this architecture. Mm -hmm. What that does is, Let's take the example of an Elastic IP. You could use either of them or you could use both depending mm -hmm. on your application requirements. In the instance of an Elastic IP address, 
That's a floating IP that AWS provides you that you can attach to your AWS resources mm -hmm. and you can detach them too. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use those capabilities here as okay. when it comes to your Elastic IP. So what happens is when you set up your IBM MQ environment, you attach your Elastic IP to the MQ primary and your application is always sending the traffic to the Elastic IP. In an all good scenario, your primary MQ has the Elastic IP attached to it and the application is communicating to your primary MQ. Mm -hmm. Well, let's say a failover happened. Mm -hmm. Your standby became your primary. Right. Now, you need to have a mechanism that detaches your Elastic IP mm -hmm. from the primary MQ instance and attaches it to the standby, which is now primary. There are various ways to do it. One way I've seen customers do this is using Lambda functions within AWS. Mm -hmm. They can use event bridge notifications to know when the primary went down and write their Lambda so that it detaches the IP from the primary mm -hmm. and attaches it to your secondary. Another option you have is to use the Elastic Load Balancer. You use health checks with your Elastic Load Balancer so that it keeps checking the primary instance if it's alive. And if something happens, it will automatically switch over to standby because standby has already promoted itself to primary because the actual primary has gone down. So these are two pretty common options I see customers using these days. So does that mean that you can choose either of these options and regardless of what you choose, that these applications won't even notice that there was a change? Absolutely. When a failover happens, it's going to be transparent to the application. Mm -hmm. Applications wouldn't even know what's happening. Um, this is another option that our customers have. It is pretty involved because customers have to set up an underlying storage, which is called as DRBD. So this is another option or another pattern mm -hmm. I've seen customers use when it comes to IBM MQ deployments. Okay. We call this as IBM MQ HA, high availability deployment. So you'll notice stark difference between the previous two deployments for the developer and your multi-instance. And this one, the main difference here is it uses three availability zones mm -hmm. instead of two that were being used in the previous one. The reason for that is this pattern requires three availability zones. Because notice in HA configuration, we create EBS volumes instead of using Elastic File System or FSx NetApp Contact. Mm -hmm. And we have to tie these EBS block storage in each of these availability zones together using what we call as DRBD technology. And it's pretty involved. Customers have to set it up themselves. This is not managed. And now when MQ itself is concerned, customers have to deploy MQ themselves, configure one of them as primary, and the remaining two are secondary. And it uses Pacemaker in order to manage health between these IBM MQ nodes. And DRBD automatically replicates your queue data across all availability zones from a primary queue manager. Now, let's say failover happens. One of them takes over and it becomes the primary and data is already there in the EBS block store because DRBD has been replicating this data all the while. Now, one thing customers have to keep in mind here is like in the previous multi-instance example, they have to use either Elastic IPs or Elastic Load Balancers in order to keep the failover transparent to the application. And one other thing customers need to note here is because data is being replicated between availability zones, mm -hmm. there is going to be costs involved for inter-AZ traffic. So now that you've gone through how it can be done with three AZs, is there a way to for it to be done with two AZs, you know, to maybe help reduce some costs? Yeah, absolutely. This is another pattern I've seen customers use. It uses Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Mm -hmm. And Red Hat Enterprise Linux comes with an add-on, which is called HA add-on yeah. for high availability. Yeah. This is, again, fully involved. Customer has to set this up themselves. Mm -hmm. What they're going to do here is, instead of setting up redundancy in the MQ level, mm -hmm. they're going to set up redundancy at the instance level. Mm -hmm. Think of it as setting up redundancy between your virtual machines yeah. in an on-premise environment. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take advantage of Red Hat Enterprise Linux add-on for high availability 
and deploy IBM MQ on those instances. So failover will be managed by Red Hat Enterprise Linux for you. Mm -hmm. Customer doesn't have to do any configurations for MQ, for failover that is. Yeah. Again, since this is happening between two availability zones, you need to have data persistence in a, in a production environment so you don't lose your queue data. Mm -hmm. We recommend that customers use either FSx NetApp on tap mm -hmm. if they want high performance or they can use Amazon Elastic file system to store their queue data. And this architecture or pattern makes use of CoroSync and Pacemaker. Uh, the Red Hat underlying add-on makes use of these technologies mm -hmm. in order to keep quorum between the two instances that are running MQ. Got it. So where does the cost reduction come in? So instead of three availability zones, you've narrowed it down to two availability zones. Yeah. And when it comes to FSx NetApp on tap or EFS, mm -hmm. there's no replication that the customer needs to do because these two are regional services okay. and we take care of replication and it's built into the cost of the service. You don't have to pay anything extra. Got it. Thank you so much for watching this video. We'll see you in another video next time. Thank you. Bye now. Bye.